Hello, in this presentation I will introduce the Nabit Hartenberg convention to obtain forward kinematics models of robot arms. The main goal of the presentation is to explain the rules defined by the Nabit Hartenberg convention. We will need to identify robot joints and links so we can apply the Nabit Hartenberg method rules in order to obtain reference frames associated with each of the links. In addition, we will also need to obtain the Nabit Hartenberg parameters from usually taken from the robot technical specifications. And the final goal is to express uh, a transformation between the links and particularly the end effector link with respect to the robot base. In this sense, the Nabit Hardeman convention is nothing more than a set of rules that allow us to associate reference frames to each of the robot links, regardless the geometry of the link. In addition, we can apply this convention to robots with revolute or prismatic type joints. But the truth be told is that other type of joints such as cylindrical or spherical can be also used with this methodology since they can be seen as a composition of previously joints. The ultimate goal is that starting from the robot's base we will compute the reference frames for each of the robot links and obtain four parameters associated with each of the transformations that will exclusively depend on the robot dimensions. This is a minimum parameterization and for this reason it has been adopted as a convention, that is an agreement that has been adopted uh, by the robotic community in order to be able to standardize the process of obtaining kinematic models. In order to apply this method uh, we must take into account that it only uh, applies to serial kinematic chains, no matter the number of degrees of freedom of the robot. We must know the dimensions of each of the links and the direction of rotation or displacement of the joints. In addition, we must know the base reference frame. This data uh, usually is uh, obtained from technical specifications from the manufacturer. In many academic examples, uh, this data sometimes is not uh, given, so it means that you have the free uh, freedom to choose whatever, whatever you prefer. And um, that's why, depending uh, how we select uh, some of these uh, uh, data, it is said that the, the forward kinematics uh, might have some kind of, uh, or produce some kind of ambiguities, but in the end, the resulting uh, forward kinematic method, method uh, or model is unique. Actually, robot manufacturers provide in their technical specifications all the data we need, such as robot dimensions, the location of the joint axis, including usually their direction of rotation, as well as the robot reference frame. So this data must be known um, in advance in order to obtain the kinematic model. Well, uh, first, uh, in order to apply this method, we need to identify uh, which are the links and joints of the, ro of the robot. This is a, a process in which obviously you should have already have some experience and eventually you can rely on the technical specifications if you don't really know uh, which is uh, a link or, a, or the difference between one link and another one. Well, in this case, link L0 is the fixed link and from there we name links from L1 to Ln. Also, we name joints from Q1 to Qn. Here we see an example of two robots, one with seven links and six joints and the other one with five links and four joints. We will also assume that the current configuration that we see in the pictures is the one with all joints with position or angle zero. Revolute joints will rotate in one specific direction with a positive increase in, in their position, while prismatic joints will advance in one specific direction as their position value increases. These directions are important to uh, be known in advance in order to set the direction of the set axis, as we will see later. If this direction is not known, this means that we can freely choose this direction arbitrarily. The robot base has a reference frame associated with it. 
The main requirement for this reference frame is that the uh, axis Z0 points towards the same direction as Q1, taking into account the direction of rotation of the joint in this case. Axes X0 and Y0 can be chosen arbitrarily as long as the system forms a dextrorotary rotary reference frame. In industrial robots, the manufacturer will actually indicate the exact place of a such reference frame, but in academic examples, we might have the liberty uh, uh, to choose which is the exact position for the, of this frame. The z-axis of the rest of reference frames must be placed actually on the joint axis, bearing in mind that the z-i points in the direction of the q uh, i plus 1 joint. The Zn axis corresponding to the Z axis of the last reference frame will point in the same direction as the Zn minus 1 axis. Okay? Here you have in the figures examples of how to set these uh, directions. The X axis must point in the direction of the common normal between the Z axis, actually the, uh, between the directions of the Zi and Zi minus 1 axis. The common normal, by definition, is a direction that is perpendicular to both axes. Here, I have included four possible cases depending on Zi and Zi-1. If joints have parallel axes, there are multiple common normals. Usually, we will choose the one that tries to make zero-sum distance parameter, as we will see later. If the Z axes are coincident, then again we have multiple common normals. We will choose any of them that tries to make 0 pi half or pi or 3 pi half to some of the Denabi uh, Hartenberg uh, parameters, as we will see. In order, uh, or sorry, indeed, um, we will choose uh, directions that naturally point, usually point towards. The, uh, the base from uh, towards the tip of the robot, uh, if possible. For the case that the axes intersect or cross, the common normal is unique, and it is obtained or can be uh, obtained by computing the cross product of the axes, which can be defined in one of in one direction or actually in the opposite direction. Here I have highlighted the common normal between the axes. Zi-1 and Zi, or at least one of them, since as we have already seen, there might be cases with multiple common normals. In fact, for the robot on the left figure, the common normal N1 is obtained from the intersection between axes Z0 and Z1, while the common normal N2 is obtained from the axes Z1 and Z2. Uh, these two axes are parallel. Axis N2 um, coincides with N3, in this case, uh, points to the same direction, but this is just simply a coincidence because N3 has been obtained from the intersection, in this case, of Z2 and Z3. The last common normal, N6, is obtained from axis Z5 and Z6 that are coincident, and therefore we could select any of the multiple uh, common normals as long as they are perpendicular to the axis, although it is usually to select the common normal that actually points to the same direction as the previous common normal that we had before. This will make some parameters uh, simpler. Once uh, the common normal's axis have been fixed, now we must set the origins of the reference frames, because until now the set vectors, the set axes, were free vectors. But now, in this step, we are about to specify the origin of each of the reference frames. In this sense, we will choose the origin OI as the intersection point between the normal NI and the Z axis ZI. Keep in mind that the origin is not necessarily a physical point of the link, since this uh, the, or the geometry of the link has nothing to do with the origin position regarding all these geometric transformations. If the axes Zi-1 and Zi are parallel, we have multiple common normals, remember, so we will usually select the one that passes through 
the previous origin o y o i minus 1 because this will again make some parameter 0 although sometimes it is convenient to select another value because in this way the reference frame belongs to physical uh, point to an actual physical point of the link as is the case of the origins of the sky robot here I have highlighted uh, with uh, or the, the point uh, with a point uh, painted in in, uh, in purple the origins of each of the reference frames now we have the origins then x axis remember that I mentioned that must point in the direction of the common normal okay this is the common normal n i which is the common normal between the axis z i and z i minus 1 the, the direction or the, uh, of the x axis is arbitrary totally arbitrary although it is convenient trying to apply the same direction as the previous axis if possible or just simply trying to point towards from the base towards the tip of the robot for example the axis x1 in this uh, in, the, in the example on the um, on the figure on the left could point to in the, in the opposite direction but that would imply that the angle between x0 and x1 would be actually 180 degrees which will make some the number hardware parameters not zero as we will see later the y-axis must form a dextro rotary reference frame considering that we already have obtained the x and z axis thus we just simply need to apply the right hand rule uh, pointing in this case the thumb to the z axis and the index finger to the x axis the middle finger forming 90 degrees uh, with the two fingers will tell us actually the direction of the y axis so if you have followed all these rules established by the dynamic hardware convention then you are in the position to obtain the relative transformation between the consecutive links through four basic transformations defined by four parameters theta, v, a and alpha although sometimes the parameter a is denoted also as r these basic transformations are performed with respect to the mobile reference frame that is a rotation in theta along or around the z-axis followed by a translation d along z-axis followed by a translation a along x-axis and an alpha rotation along the x-axis therefore if we apply the specific expressions for each of these basic transformations we will obtain the denabit hardenberg transformation matrix if we have applied the rules established in the dynamic hardenberg method then we will be able to obtain such parameters from consecutive reference frames the angle theta sub i is obtained from the angle between the axis x i minus 1 and x i the parameter v i and a i are obtained from the displacements of the origins o i minus 1 to o i which can be done by moving along the z axis and then to, uh, along the new x axis once we have rotated uh, around the z theta i uh, angle finally the angle alpha i is obtained from the angle between the vector z, z i minus 1 and z i please bear in mind that the displacement v i and a i have a sign that is they are made according to the direction of each of the axes z and x respectively so they might have negative values indicating that the movement is carried out in the opposite direction to the one pointed by, by the axis the denabit hardenberg transformation matrix depends exclusively on constructive parameters of the robot although the values qi of the joints will be added to some of these parameters specifically if we have a revolute joint, the joint value will be added to the parameter theta, which corresponds to the rotation in z, because the z-axis was always pointing in the same direction of the joint, remember. On the other hand, 
If the joint is a prismatic joint, then instead of a turn, we will have a displacement in the z-axis and therefore the value of the joint, q, i, will be added actually to the parameter di in, in the transformation or in the Hardenberg transformation matrix. Now, we have all the elements to be able to obtain the four dynamic hardware parameters associated with each of the links. This is usually uh, represented with a table that will mainly depend on constructive robot values, but also on uh, some arbitrary decisions such as the directions of the x-axis. Keep in mind that the values of the parameters d and a can be positive or negative since they are not distances, but displacements. Each row of this table represents a transformation that relates the position and orientation of a link with respect to the previous one. In this way, in the first row we have the, uh, the transformation of link 1 with respect to link 0, while, for example, in the last row represents uh, the transformation of link n with respect to the n minus 1. The transformation of the end effector with respect to the robot base can be obtained from post-multiplications of the relative transformations obtained in each of the joints, since this is an open kinematic change series and then we just simply can use the formula indicated below. Well, in this presentation I have presented the rules of the dynamic Hardenberg convention in order to obtain forward kinematic models in open kinematic chains. Thank you very much.